Um, gosh, I can't believe we're all here together in person. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, well, first, I just want to really welcome our esteemed guests. Thank you for coming, Stephen Hicks, of course, Dr. Grasmick, and we're so grateful to be um, honoring Congressman Anthony Brown in our space today. I can't tell you what an honor it is for you to be here today. The partnerships represented on this campus reflect the commitment of Maryland's leaders to the earliest years, knowing what a difference it makes for all of us in Maryland. Today and decades down the road, when the children we invest in today are all grown up. Prince George's Child Resource Center launched the Adelphi Langley Park Family Support Center here in 1994, thanks to Maryland State Department of Education and Maryland Family Network, then Friends of the Family. And we have provided comprehensive services to hundreds of families since that time. And I'd just like to introduce Natalie Coward, who's the current director of the Family Support Center. Natalie, give a wave. And, um, and then today we also have Aura Garcia and her daughter Elisa right over here. They are representatives of uh, the families we're able to serve. Um, Aura joined us in February 2020, and then she stuck with us all through the virtual year. And all reports are that she has improved her English and that, her, uh, and that she's well on her way toward her goals. So we're so glad to have you here. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and I want to introduce our local partners here today. The original Judy Center launched right upstairs from us just a few years after we launched, making the dream of a one-stop shop for parents come to life. Andrea Hall is the instructor, instructional supervisor of both Judy Centers. Andrea, where? There's Andrea. Uh, we are so lucky to open another one this year. And... Um, Continuing the vision of the one-stop shop, in addition, we have Mary's Center sandwiched right between us where we can refer our families for uh, top-notch health care. And I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Principal Cameron Milspa over there, who holds us together here at Cool Spring Elementary School, where we're all working to make sure that children have rich early learning experiences by the time they get to kindergarten and then the success continues from there on this campus. And uh, Dr. Whitehead is our Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction for Prince George's County Public Schools, and she has been such a staunch advocate for the partnerships represented in this building. And lastly, I would like to introduce Dr. White, who is our uh, Chief Education academic officer, excuse me, for Prince George's County Public Schools. So thank you so much to our local partners for joining us today. And lastly, it is especially meaningful to have you here for our very first event. Um, and um, this is a center that loves to celebrate, and we always have um, dancing and music and food from all over the world with all of the families we serve. But um, last October, we lost Denitza Simpson to COVID-19, and she was our 20-year Family Support Center director here who lived her life to inspire parents to see that they were their child's first teacher and that as a community, we're behind our parents 100%, and we celebrate their children's successes. If she were here today, she would be so humbled, saying, Congressman Brown is coming here? He's going to see what I do? She didn't know how to do anything else but serve her community, and I can't tell you what an honor it is for you to be here today because of that. So thank you, everyone, and once again, welcome. It's my pleasure to turn things over to Laura Wheeldryer, Executive Director of Maryland Family Network.
Thank you, Jennifer, and good morning to everyone. I'm Laura Wheeldryer, Executive Director of Maryland Family Network. On behalf of Maryland Family Network and our Board of Directors, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the annual presentation of the Dr. Nancy S. Grasmick Leadership Award for Early Care and Education. MFN, Maryland Family Network, is the state's foremost advocacy organization for young children and their families. It's our mission to ensure that young children have strong families, quality early learning environments, and a champion for their interests. We work very closely with the state's network of family support centers and child care resource centers, as well as a host of other stakeholders. And we're very proud of the remarkable successes we in Maryland have collectively achieved in the realm of early childhood education. Those successes would not be possible without leaders like Congressman Anthony Brown, who shares our values and priorities and use their talents to pursue them in the public policy arena. We are very proud to honor this distinguished and ongoing service on behalf of Maryland's youngest children and their families. Jennifer has already noted some of our special guests who've joined us. It's my pleasure, in addition to being um, to all of the people Jennifer's already named, to name our board members from MFN who are here today, the first of whom is Jennifer Iverson, serves as a network representative on our board. I want to also acknowledge Dr. Nancy Grasmick, Renee McGurk-Spence, and Jason Williams. Thank you all for your support and leadership. The Nancy S. Grasmick Leadership Award in Early Care and Education is given annually to a champion for children who, through their outstanding record of accomplishments, exemplifies the commitment to young children, their families, their teachers, child care providers that Dr. Grasmick herself has embodied throughout her career. To make our presentation to this year's nominee, I have the privilege of introducing the award's namesake, Dr. Nancy Grasmick one of the most dynamic champions for early childhood education this country, not just this state, has ever seen. Under her leadership, Maryland became arguably the preeminent state in the nation for early care and education. And that has propelled our state's success in prosperity in a multitude of ways. For all her great policy wisdom, political acumen, Dr. Grasmick has never lost her innate sense of what it means and what it takes to make a difference in the life of a young child. She is my hero. She is my friend. She honors MFN with her service on its board. Nancy, could you please come and introduce our guest of honor? Thank you, Laura, for such a lovely introduction. And I would just like to say the Maryland Family Network is in good hands with your leadership. You've done an extraordinary job in a very tough environment during this pandemic. So thank you so much for all of your contribution of skill and uh, dedication. Thank you. We all want to thank you. Anyway. Um, I am so pleased to be here today. It is really an honor to introduce you and your um, achievements, which are so many, to this whole arena of early childhood education. So I want to take the time to really make everyone aware of the magnitude of this gentleman's incredible contributions, both at the state and the national level. Um, he has represented Prince George's County. He has represented the state of Maryland and indeed our country in his current position as a congressman. And he has devoted his life to these years in public service, but it also in armed service for our nation. I have known Congressman Brown since his early days in the House of Delegates in Annapolis, when he was very quickly and widely recognized as a rising star. 
while legislative achievements ranged across a variety of policy issues from health disparities and domestic violence to BRAC, where I had an opportunity to serve him on that committee which he led, and to public-private partnerships. He has kept a very special focus on us in Maryland and the needs of young children and their families. That's why we're so delighted as the Maryland Family Network board and staff to honor him today. From very early on, Congressman Brown took a keen interest in promoting adoption. I recall those early meetings at the Maryland State Department of Education, and he wanted to address the needs of foster children, an area that was of particular interest to him, an interest he took from the corridors of the state capitol into the community across the state of Maryland. His years as lieutenant governor saw a remarkable 17,000 adoptions and a 43% decline in the number of children in foster care. As lieutenant governor, he took the lead in modernizing outmoded Maryland's laws on child neglect and exceedingly, and we all know this, sensitive topic involving not only child advocates, but social workers, prosecutors, and public defenders. Lieutenant Governor Brown's leadership was extraordinary for its inclusiveness, welcoming and giving full voice to dissenting opinions on the outcomes that most, but not all, embraced. That is a particular skill that Congressman Brown has, and that is to value everyone's opinion and to work in organizing and being able to produce results from a group of people who may have differing opinions. One of Congressman Brown's final and most uh, enduring achievements as a lieutenant governor was the enactment of the Pre-Kindergarten Expansion Act of 2014. Notably, this bill dedicated an additional $4 million in state funds to our pre-K system, and this investment paid dividends many times over by securing for Maryland a $50 million federal grant to um, propel in a greater way that expansion. Just as important, this legislation enshrined in law a progressive, inclusive vision of pre-K that engaged private partners as well as public school programs. And all of us sitting here today know the value of what was done through that work. This diverse delivery model is absolutely critical to raising the quality of early childhood education for all of our children, not just the four-year-olds. As I think you can readily see, Lieutenant Governor Brown's Pre-Kindergarten Expansion Act of 2014 has had even a greater impact for all of us who know the legislation that was just passed on the Kerwin Commission, this is the person who really founded the roots of all of that. And we are so grateful. Grateful for your hard work and your dedication, but grateful for propelling this opportunity for the future for so many children. So thank you so much. And most recently, Congressman Brown, along with his colleagues on Capitol Hill, have taken the public health crisis created by the pandemic and turned it into an unprecedented opportunity 
for early care and education. Last year, COVID relief packages brought desperately needed funding to help child care programs that were and are still in many ways struggling to survive. But those packages are eclipsed by the new American Rescue Plan, which set aside $500 million, that's with a B, for Maryland. I think that deserves an incredible applause <laughs> for child care in Maryland. Early care and education advocates, as a result, can not only really dream big as they never have before, we can truly build back better. And so there can be no doubt in my mind that this is a person who deserves this recognition. And actually, we should be singing this song across this nation for this person's contributions and really was a trailblazer in Maryland and now in the nation. And um, you have elevated early childhood education in a way it has not been done before. And that's the value of this award, in our opinion, to give to you for what you've done. And so I, at this time, would like to present this award, and I would ask Congressman Brown to join me and Laura a Wheel Dryer also. This is the kind of stuff I like to hang on the wall. That's right. The nice photos. Yeah, and indeed. This will be for the charity of your choice, one thousand dollars. Oh wow! Well, thank you for very Central much. Neo, we yep, Centro Neo, we understand. Yep, Centro That's yeah. right. He's in the same business. Yes, yes I indeed. know. It was a very apt choice. Indeed. How's everybody doing today? All righty. It's a beautiful morning. Beautiful. Sun's not shining, but it's shining in here, right? First of all, let me say uh, what an honor it is here to be here. Uh, I think this is my first kind of public event like this uh, since the pandemic uh, 14, 15 months ago. I've had a few opportunities to be in person with people, but um, not to have a visit, an event uh, with such uh, distinguished people. So it's an honor for me to be, to be here and to be sort of back out again as we're moving closer and closer to whatever that new normal uh, post-pandemic might look like. Um, I want to first start by just thanking uh, Dr. Brasman. Thank you um, certainly for your kind words, but um, I've had an opportunity to watch and work with uh, Nancy, witness uh, her advocacy, your leadership, uh, and you're just an extraordinary educator. Um, and what you've done in Maryland, uh, working together with each and every one of us, uh, has set hundreds of thousands of Maryland children on the path to success, whatever success it is that, and how they define it for themselves. And you've also been a real model and put Maryland 
in a position to be a model uh, for the possible uh, when it comes to early childhood education, K through 12 education, and the work that we need to do to prepare the young people uh, for their future, uh, whether it's going off to college, whether it's going straight into the workplace, but more and more young Marylanders, uh, and uh, without revealing uh, um, how long you may have been uh, working, um, probably a few old Marylanders, Marylanders too who have benefited, but you've just been extraordinary and it's been just a, a real honor to be able to work with you. So to be able to receive this award today in your name um, means a lot to me. It, it really does, Nancy. So thank you very much. Um, and I uh, also want to thank uh, Jennifer Iverson. Uh, thank you for the, the tour. Thank you for the work that, uh, that you're doing uh, and you and, and your team. Uh, special thanks to uh, Laura Wheeldryer. Thank you very much. And all the distinguished uh, guests and the, uh, the men and women who are working um, in the Prince George County Public School System at the Department of Social Services and, and, and other places uh, to really do to uh, improve the quality of life uh, for um, all of our, our residents uh, who come with different backgrounds and different experiences, um, different aspirations and challenges. Uh, but the work that you do, that you put in each and every day, I want to thank uh, each of you. Uh, this award uh, today, while given to me, presented to me, um, is really a reflection of you. Uh, one of the greatest joys uh, that I have as a public servant, uh, and this is no less true today than when I raised my right hand as a second lieutenant of the United States Army uh, back in 1984, um, is to be able to work with wonderful people uh, who are committed to doing good uh, and are committed to serving others. Um, and I think that's what this award uh, reflects, uh, and it's a reflection of each and every one of you. So I accept that. I accept this on behalf of uh, all of us uh, who are day in and day out uh, focused on early childhood education, um, our, our, our young people, uh, their families, I've got a set of prepared remarks, which I won't dare go through. Um, I just want to say that, um, Nancy, while you recognize my ability in Annapolis to pull th people together, it's been much more challenging in Washington. <laughs> it's been much more challenging in Washington. Uh, but uh, the good news is we get some things done. And the American Rescue Plan, uh, which uh, President Biden signed into law um, just three weeks ago, um, had plenty good in there. And we heard the numbers, 500 million or so. Um, the state of Maryland has received about six, um, uh, five to six billion dollars for a variety of, of things, education, K through 12 higher education, um, public health, um, supports to families. Of course, we're excited with the direct cash assistance and expanding the eligibility to more and more families. Uh, the child tax credits, um, $3,000 um, per child, um, $3,600 for children uh, under six, um, significant support to families for a child care. I, the, I think the, the um, typical or average, if there is such, a family in Prince George's County could stand to benefit up to uh, $8,000, a family of four in Prince George's County in child uh, care um, expenditures and, and assistance. Uh, we've extended unemployment insurance uh, benefits out till uh, September. Um, we've invested millions of dollars, billions around the country, millions in Maryland, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to open our schools and open up, open them safely, uh, where we're uh, providing um, educators with the supports that they need. We're providing educators and 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 children with the uh, personal protective equipment that they need. And we're giving the schools great latitude in how they deploy those dollars, whether addressing the lost learning, um, perhaps summer school, uh, or additional supports to students, um, the digital divide that continues to plague uh, so many. This last year, to say it's a, it was a challenge is probably the understatement of the year. Um, it's been um, a very difficult year. Um, and I think President Biden about three weeks ago um, explained it best. You know, some families have lost a loved one, uh, some, some teams, and, and, and you've lost a, a, loved, a loved one here, your leader. 
Um, others have lost a job, uh, furloughed or laid off. Uh, small businesses have been shuttered. Some will, will never open. Um, other families have been spared the more uh, acute or adverse, uh, the gravest hardships. But as President Biden, I think, so passionately and completely articulated three weeks ago, all of us has lost something. We've all lost something. Uh, the inability to be with a family member at that, just at the right time. Uh, the opportunity to share experiences and stories with neighbors. Um, the water cooler, I don't know if it exists anymore. <laughs> Zoom hasn't come up with that one yet. Uh, but just the time spent with colleagues in the office. Uh, we've all, all lost something. Um, this virus, uh, which created a pandemic, which caused the shutdown of the economy, inflicted such um, severe hardship. Uh, but we also had another uh, crisis that uh, uh, came to the forefront, uh, like the novel coronas, coronavirus. It's, can be, it's just as deadly, just as pernicious. Uh, like viruses, it's been around for centuries in this country for four centuries. And that was the virus and is the virus of racism. Um, many of us have been focused on the impact of racism, systemic racism, for years. Uh, we see it in the disparity in educational outcomes. Uh, we see it in the disparities in the health system, the, the labor market. Uh, and we certainly saw it on full display May of last year in the criminal justice, the law enforcement community uh, where George Floyd uh, was murdered. Um, George Floyd wasn't the first uh, young African-American uh, to be killed at the hands of the police, and sadly, uh, he will not be the last, and we saw that just last uh, week. But these two crises, this pandemic caused by a virus, racism that has been plaguing our nation for centuries, um, have revealed to more and more Americans the existence of the challenges that we face. And I think now is the moment. Um, and with the leadership of President Biden, uh, the will of members of Congress, we saw it last week in the, or three weeks ago in the American Rescue Plan, throughout that plan, our principles, the cornerstone of, of equity, uh, addressing big challenges like climate. Um, and next up is the American Jobs Plan. Uh, and while we speak of that as an infrastructure plan. I view infrastructure not simply as the roads and the rail and the, the bricks and the mortar, but it's also that human capital. And that's why I join so many on Capitol Hill to make sure that whatever we do, we continue to make investments in childcare, in early uh, education, supports the family. Because what good is infrastructure if you don't have the ability to maintain it or the quality of life to enjoy it. And that's why we're going to take an expansive look. $2.2 trillion in infrastructure. And then just this morning, you're starting to read that we've got plans for bigger investments even beyond that. Two plus trillion in the American Family Plan, which will be coming next. This is the moment. Uh, this is the moment where our, that our nation has to seize. Um, and what you find is that Americans of all backgrounds and all party affiliations, Democrats, Republicans, and independents support these major investments. We just gotta make sure that that support, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, is also found somewhere on Capitol Hill because we know it's out there in the community. Uh, but my commitment to you is to uh, continue to work uh, on Capitol Hill, to continue to work uh, in the community, um, particularly on this important issue of ch early childhood, uh, education. You know, you can talk to a, a university uh, professor or, or provost um, and listen to them talk about the challenges in educating uh, the next generation of leaders, whether they're STEM professionals or regardless of the field they'll go into, and you'll ask them, what is the one, two, or three things that we can do to ensure college readiness and college completion? 
And you would think they would, they would, su they would suggest greater investments in engineering facilities on my campus. Um, we've got to lower the cost of, of, of tuition. Uh, we've got to make sure that we can hire and maintain the best, best and brightest professors. And all that's important. Uh, but no doubt, each and every one of those provosts and professors would tell you that if we want to ensure college completion, uh, we want to be able to promote that its investments in early childhood education. And that's why I was proud to join with Nancy and so many of you when as Lieutenant Governor, we expanded by the number 4,000, the number of Maryland four-year-olds who have access to quality education, recognizing that our public school system wasn't able or isn't able necessarily at this moment uh, to absorb that additional number of students uh, in those programs. So looking to partner uh, with the private sector, many of whom are providing outstanding quality pre-K education, partnering with them to expand. Uh, but we've got a long way to go. And notwithstanding that in the last several years we haven't made that much progress, if any at all, I am very hopeful, as you pointed out, Dr. Rasnick, with what the General Assembly just accomplished, which is to pass the uh, Maryland um, a blueprint uh, based on the Kerwin uh, Commission with a heavy dose of investment in our children and in their futures. So I look forward to continue to work with you. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Just one final thank you to everyone for coming today. I just want to especially thank um, everyone from Maryland State Department of Education, Maryland Family Network, Prince George's County Public Schools, and of course, Dr. Grasnick and um, Congressman Brown. And thank you, Aura and Elisa, for coming as well. Thank you, and please come back when you can see us in action. Thanks.